Hello and welcome to this video lecture series on microwave tubes. In this video, we will discuss about a crossed field microwave tube which is a magnetron. This is basically used to generate high power microwave oscillations. So, it is a high power microwave oscillator. We have a reflex crystal as a low power microwave oscillator and this magnetron is high power microwave oscillator. As such, there are various types of magnetrons out of which cylindrical magnetron we are going to discuss in this video. Cylindrical magnetron. Let us see the schematic for this cylindrical magnetron. So it has got cathode at the center whose radius is small a and there are several anode cavities placed at specific distance. So adjacent spacing between cavities is constant and they have been placed in this fashion around the cathode and all these anode cavities have a uh, specific uh, angle angular separation based on that there are different types of uh, magnetrons okay so the bias voltage between cathode and anode is given and the rf out is taken from one of the cavities and all these cavity anode cavities are internally connected so this is how the constructional details for cylindrical magnetron are there so basically this cylindrical magnetron is a crossed crossed field microwave tube so why this is called as a crossed field microwave tube because in this tube DC electric field and DC magnetic field are perpendicular to each other. So that is why this tube is called as crossed field tube. So there are various types of crossed field tubes and because of the crossed field uh, electric DC electric and DC magnetic field are crossed between cathode and anode because these are the anode cavities and at the center we have anode uh, sorry we have cathode at the center and different anode cavities and the crossed fields are present in between cathode and anode when electrons starting from cathode or emitted from cathode and uh, moving towards anode they will influence the crossed field and they move in the curved path and if the dc magnetic field is strong enough which is present between cathode and anode this is dc magnetic field you can see if that is strong enough the electrons will not arrive at the anode but they will return back to the cathode so that is very important topic about the dc electric and magnetic field that we will try to understand with the four different cases first we assume that we have a central uh, cathode and then we have different anodes placed surrounding to that cathode if they have we have given a dc bias and if electrons have been started so without any magnetic field if no magnetic field is present electrons will travel in a straight path and they will reach at the anode if we apply a small magnetic field if we apply a small magnetic field and if it is present between this interaction space which is the space between cathode and anode so electrons will take a little curve path because the force f is going to act on an electron which is minus e into e 
and that is V cross B. So depending on the intensity of the magnetic field, electrons will take the curve path. If you further increase the magnetic field present in the interaction region and which is at the critical value specific B is equal to Bc at which electrons will just graze anode and they return back to the cathode. Stronger the magnetic field in interaction space, the more curve path would be taken by the electrons. And if further you increase the magnetic field which is greater than specific field called as a, a cutoff magnetic field or hull cutoff magnetic field, the derivation for this we will derive in our upcoming video. So, if you further increase the magnetic field, electrons will just move in the space between cathode and anode. They will never reach to the anode. So, this phenomena basically result uh, into very high efficiency for this magnetron oscillators. So, this is how the uh, constructional details and movement of electrons and how the uh, crossed field are going to affect on the movement of electron, how they are uh, changing the path of the electron that we have discussed. Also, we have talked something about a critical magnetic field which result into uh, electrons will just graze anode and uh, return back to the cathode that we have discussed. But now, let us try to understand how this magnetron or how this cavity is going to produce oscillations. So, we know that if we have a cathode, it is going to generate some RF signal. So, due to uh, generation of, sorry, if we have a cathode, it is going to generate electrons. So, if, if we uh, consider there are electrons are going to generate and their movement is going to vary as per the presence of magnetic field in the cavity. Okay. So, with this basis only, we will try to understand the operation of uh, magnetron. So, as soon as you uh, know that we have DC supply voltage and if we switch it on, so due to excitation of these anode cavities, a small RF signal or rather we will call it as a small RF noise voltage is going to produce because from, uh, from this particular bias circuit and that noise will come out as a fringing field fashion uh, out of these cavities into the space between anode and cathode. So, that small RF signal is going to present or the proper word would be a noise voltage because of this bias circuit is going to uh, produce and the interaction of electrons with that RF noise signal, we know that uh, accelerated electrons in the trajectory, if they interact with the retarded phase or retarded field of this RF signal, they will transfer their energy in form of electromagnetic energy and this process is going to continue so that if it this process is having substantial amount and if it balances the losses in this particular structure so rf oscillations can be generated and those oscillations or that rf signal can be taken out from one of the cavities rather all these cavities are internally connected so for that purpose we have to adjust apply voltage V0 and the DC magnetic flux B because of that the trajectory of electrons can be adjusted. So, we have to adjust the applied DC voltage and DC magnetic field in such a way that electrons will be emitted from the cathode and they will again come back by just raising anode cavities they will come back to the cathode and again they travel between the space cathode and anode. So, as and when they interact with the retarded field of the RF signal they will give up their kinetic energy again they go back to the cathode acquire again uh, the velocity and try to reach to the anode again they will be curved because of the uh, magnetic field present in the cavity. So, this process continues and sustained oscillations can be generated out of this magnetron tube. So, that is how the uh, cylindrical magnetron operates and it is basically used as a high power microwave oscillator. Thank you.